Yeah, I didn't put that in because it's a soybean session, and then I thought maybe I put her put it in the title in case some corn people wandered in here by mistake. Uh, I usually talk about nitrogen on corn, but the last couple of years we've been doing some of this. We don't really have funding for it, but uh, I think it's an important question, and we have a lot of people that are doing this without very much forethought because somebody used it in a contest and they thought maybe they should use it too. Nitrogen, as you know, is a big issue both economically and environmentally. And those of us who have talked about it said the last thing we need is to be putting nitrogen on a crop that has never really needed it. And, uh, oh, I'm supposed to put dry humor in, you said? That was it. That was it right there. So we'll move on. Um, but it is kind of an interesting thing. You know, we've, when I got to Illinois 35 years ago, I saw in the agronomy handbook they had an experiment and they had gone, I think, up to 1,200 pounds of nitrogen and they, they still only got 40 bushel out of their soybeans and uh, they had no response whatsoever. And we've been hearing that. We heard that back in school. We've been hearing it ever since. Soybeans doesn't need nitrogen. In fact, nitrogen doesn't let the nodules work crop properly and then we can actually end the crop in some problems. But why are we talking about it now? Well, one of the reasons, obviously, is that our yields are, are considerably higher. and We've had a run of good yields across in the U.S., and they keep going up. And we had this last, um, you know, Illinois has set uh, two yield records in the last three years. Uh, last year, our statewide was 59. And with the field, and, and at that level, you know, field, one farmer casually told me last fall, he said, yeah, we had a field that went 100, but he wasn't trying to make news with it. And I, I appreciated that because everybody needs to make news uh, these days. But 80s were almost routine. We had a couple county yields, I believe, this last year and in 2014 that were uh, at 70 or a little bit above. So when you get to those levels, people say, well, can this crop really do the trick both fill this seed and give out, allow the, or produce the energy that these bacteria in the nodules need to fix atmospheric nitrogen. It's an energy using uh, uh, prop, uh, process for sure. And there's been contention that soybeans can't fix all the nitrogen they need and, then, and make high yields as well. And I've tried to do some rough calculations. Sean, you can, you maybe can uh, come up with your own, but I think I've calculated that, you know, it could be 8 to 10 percent of the photosynthesis uh, during the, at least the, from mid-vegetative stage up to probably middle of the seed filling stage that goes to nitrogen fixation in a high yielding crop. So the energy use is large for making, nit or for fixing nitrogen. Soybean yield contest winners, as I said, use nitrogen fertilizer. Some do it repeatedly, and very few actually will admit the rates they put on or how often they put it on. It's just that take no prisoners approach to management where you don't really care if that fifth application of nitrogen was necessary. You just put it on anyway. And they're often combining it with fungicides and the idea to keep the plant green longer, and you've all heard the stories about that. Some su consultants suggest or push this as something that might raise yields. And again, it's generally done without ever really showing that it, that it helps. And I just put this in to show you what our yields have been doing. And so the, these last three years, you know, the economists were a little baffled. They asked me, what's happened with soybeans that, you know, our model doesn't fit? It doesn't allow three years above trend line like that. And I said, well, I guess it's the quality of the extension work or something in Illinois. But uh, I went back and found some old data from about uh, more than 20 years ago. They did some in, in Kansas. Notice they have a, a scale that's pretty well expanded there. So they didn't really see very much there. And they use different forms in ammonium nitrate, UAN, and urea. Uh, and this this has taken on a life of its own every little once in a while, and then it kind of dies away. And, uh, you know, urea, 
put on sometime in the mid-season has been the typical thing that people are doing. So you don't put it on early because you don't want nodules to be active, but then you put it on the mid-season about the time that seed filling starts. And so these are, you know, this was some work that was published. It was a review that was published almost 10 years ago now. Uh, he was at Nebraska. He's from Argentina, but he was at Nebraska. And this kind of renovated the idea. And it's, I'm just showing you that I found it here. <laughs> you don't need to really look at it. But they looked at data from all over the world. Now, they didn't find very much on nitrogen on soybeans. In my early life, we were working in Bangladesh where they had never grown soybeans, trying to introduce the crop. And they typically used a little bit of nitrogen to start with, start it out but uh, we're not sure whether that was really necessary. What I'm saying is there are places in the world, and India is the same way, where they suggest a little bit of nitrogen, but they're planting into very different soil conditions. In central India, they're planting into soils that, you know, probably were, their temperatures were, are above 100 degrees routinely before the monsoon comes, and then they plant. So under those conditions, we don't know if, Bacteria are going to be very active where these things will nodulate very well, and they just use some uh, nitrogen to get them started a little bit. That's true, I think, in the northern Corn Belt in places as well. We just, in, a, in our situation in Illinois, where there's usually some nitrogen in the soil, we never have really needed that, but I'll show you some data. So the whole idea here is that they found in some places in the world uh, that nitrogen was helpful to soybean yields. And it was such a mass of data, I think, uh, that we've never really looked in much detail. But people took it and parlayed it into this. And this is a redraw of, a, of uh, a figure that was in that original publication, one that you can see a little better. This was just in the Fluid uh, Journal last fall talking about this, and it says conceptualized nitrogen budget is uh, based on grain nitrogen uptake, maximum soil mineralization of 100 pounds, so you can't get beyond that according to this, and maximum end fixation of 300 pounds per acre. So basically what they show is that when you get above this 400 uh, pounds of nitrogen taken up, which occurs at about 100 bush, um, a little less than 100 actually, well, about 100, that as your yields keep going up, if you want, to, you need to take up more nitrogen. I don't think too many of us would disagree that the higher the yield, the more nitrogen this crop has to have in it. And we'll talk about that, you know, trying to convince the crop to take up more nitrogen seems to be kind of critical to getting higher yields if the conditions allow. So this one just shows that, you know, you're not going to get more than 100 from the soil. You're not going to fix more than 300, and so you have this gap develop up here, and you, the idea is you have to meet that gap or that need. Once you get above this 80 bushel or so, you need to put nitrogen on if you expect yields to go higher. It's a little bit of an odd way to look at it because we don't know if you know just putting nitrogen on tells the plant, oh, now I can make another 10 bushel, or, you know, if the plant's inclined to make 10 bushel, and if you give it the nitrogen, it'll go ahead and use it. The number, the amount of data that supports this model that basically is, is a drawn thing is not very large. I got this, uh, Sean Conley and Adam Gasper at uh, Wisconsin. I think he's just finishing or finished uh, his PhD there, Adam. Uh, they put together a really nice uptake set of data for nitrogen. This is the percent over here, and here's the pounds. I think, uh, Sean, this was around 90 bushel crop, something like that, in that vicinity. And so you see it took up about 300 pounds of nitrogen. And it's pretty much a linear thing from a month or so after you plant, right up to the time it's very close to maturity. And one of the things to also to note here, they went to the work, uh, Adam did, uh, under Sean's direction, went to the work of picking up the petioles and leaves that fell off. So 
you know, it's not a lot of nitrogen that ends up on the ground, only 25 pounds or so, but it is some. And you can see here what the, the healthy leaves had in them, and it goes to zero, of course. But they're, they're the ones that get the, the biggest share of nitrogen, of course, early on. The stems and the petioles have some. And then uh, at about the time flowering begins and then seed fill begins, then it starts moving. This nitrogen moves into the seeds. So it's, it's important, this amount of nitrogen, about 50% of the nitrogen that's taken up by the plant is there by the time flowering begins. And of that 50%, you know, you can see here from 150 pounds, about 100 pounds of it, almost two thirds of it moved into the seed. That the, and the plant had to keep taking it up rapidly. So this is the part where it's making seed real rapidly, but the dry weight accumulation curve, and I won't show you that one, but it looks very much like the nitrogen curve. In other words, you know, it's needing, if, when it's, before it starts making seed, it's making plant. And it need, it's making dry weight pretty much throughout and taking nitrogen up as well. So it's all one process. The amount of nitrogen that's being fixed uh, we think is probably pretty high, oh, probably from about here on up. Uh, the rest of the nitrogen the plant takes up is just from what the soil is providing. And they also produce this that, that has yield levels that they actually measured and the total nitrogen uptake uh, in pounds per acre. So you can see, you know, a, a yield of a, of a hundred bushel takes, well, 300 and 75 or so pounds of nitrogen has to have it in the plant. So it really comes down to a matter, is the plant capable of fixing all of the nitrogen that it needs? Today, my answer is, we don't have any evidence that it isn't. Uh, it's a little bit, we're, there's still debate about how the soybean, what limits yields in soybean plants. But my, uh, in my opinion, Sean can, I'm going to have to leave after I speak, so he'll tell you what I said wrong, and uh, you can believe him or not. Uh, but in my opinion, if you can figure out how to put more pods on a plant, and maybe the same thing is true with nodules that need to fix nitrogen, the plant responds with an increase in its photosynthetic rates. I studied this first back at Purdue 40 years, more than 40 years ago, and we think, you know, the, the leaves are a little bit under-challenged in typical soybean plants. The, the plant has great capacity. We've measured seed uh, during seed fill. For a week in seed fill, we've measured uh, rate, yield increase numbers of four bushels per acre per day for a week. And that puts it in perspective a little bit. You know, it's not fixing all the nitrogen during that period that it needs, but it doesn't have to. As I showed you, it's transporting the nitrogen that's already in the plant into the seeds as they develop rapidly. And so it's a system that works. And this is, this is some good data that just backs up the fact that the more yield you have, the more nitrogen it takes. I don't think we would agree that the more nitrogen you provide, the higher yield it's going to have, however. I don't think it works that way. And of course, the seed has a lot of pro protein, has a lot of nitrogen in it. As I said here, you know, a 50 bushel crop and 38% uh, seed protein has about 180 pounds of nitrogen just in what you harvest, and an 80 bushel crop about 290. Our working number is, uh, I don't know, I use three and a quarter or something pounds of nitrogen per bushel of yield in the seed. And that's, so that's what it takes. It takes certainly more than a corn crop, a 200 bushel corn crop doesn't take up as much nitrogen as a 60 bushel soybean crop. About 50%, this is the old rule of thumb. 50% of the nitrogen comes from nodules uh, that fix nitrogen. This percentage as I added here is likely to be higher than this with yields above 60 to 70 bushels per acre. Why do I say that? Because most soils just can't really chug out more than that 
I wouldn't say 100. We've measured corn yields without fertilizer of 150. And I think that uh, some of our better soils are capable of providing at least 150 pounds of nitrogen. But in many situations uh, where we get high yields, uh, particularly in lighter soils, they're not taking up certainly more than that 100 pounds or so in many cases, and they simply have to be fixing the rest. I think that recent study, uh, Sean, you were involved in that, looking at decades of nitrogen, uh, showed something more like 70% of the nitrogen being fixed. It's a tough thing to measure <laughs> because you, you tend to use non-nodulating soybeans so that they can't fix any, and then you put nitrogen on them uh, and see what the difference is. But those non-nodulating ones aren't top yielders in any case, so we're not sure. But I think 60 to 70 is probably reasonable when we get to high soybean yields. Soil nitrate does inhibit nitrogen fixation, nodule formation, and the nodule activity. A small amount of nitrogen may increase yields in certain low soil and environments, and I'll show you what I mean by that. We'll start out showing you the data that I've usually shown when people say, well, what do you find in Illinois with nitrogen on soybeans? And this is a variety of experiments done over a five-year period. And I'm just showing you here, this is the yield in the experiment, and this is the response in bushels to adding nitrogen. And if I took off a couple of these with a star on them, is are significantly higher than the control. So we got two out of 33 that showed a significant response. Well, I mean one that was large enough that we're pretty sure it was not, it was due to nitrogen and not just random chance. But if you look at the rest of these, you know, they almost tend, tend to trend down. We certainly don't see any evidence here that the higher yields are more in need of added fertilizer nitrogen. And we've had yield, we had yields, as you can see in the 80s, uh, a number of these occasions. One of them responded, this other one was just at average yield levels. So this doesn't give us any illumination. You know, two out of 33 trials, is that what we would expect just on average? Well, I don't know if we know enough about it. I'll show you a series of these uh, that we've done over the last three years. This was a sort of typical result. We put nitrogen, 100 pounds of urea per acre has been our typical dose. Um, one set, well, I'll show you, we had 100 pounds of N instead of urea. But this is pretty much our typical flat response to nitrogen. We put it on at planting at R1, R3, R5, and then all four times. When we put it on all four times, we strong-armed the crop into giving up a, a few bushels of yield. And that's, we've actually seen that a few times. But... You know, you can't go out and put 100 pounds of urea on four times with an airplane and have six bushel pay for it either. So that one's, it's a curiosity to me because, you know, why, why is it doing that when putting it on 100 pounds on any time in, at any other time doesn't seem to be doing anything. We ran a little study that year in uh, irrigated sand north of Peoria, Illinois. It's not sand, it's a loam soil. I'll come back to this because it's been a very interesting location, and we didn't get any response that first year. We had irrigated and dry land in the same area. We got a response to sulfur, which we haven't really been able to repeat. In fact, we put ammonium sulfate in as a nitrogen source in a several of these trials to see if we can make that uh, yield more due to the sulfur, and we haven't been successful. So this is a larger study we did in 2015 then with 90 bushel yields uh, in the control, and we only had two treatments here that yielded more, and this was 100 pounds of nitrogen. We had a little miscommunication, I think, or I couldn't figure out if 100 pounds of, of urea was enough to satisfy people, so we just dosed it up to 100 pounds of nitrogen, or about 220 pounds of urea. And the, the check yielded 91, and we had two treatments that yielded more, and they both yielded about five bushel above. That was the application of 200 pounds of nitrogen and of 400 pounds of nitrogen. So again, if you pour the nitrogen on, I think there is some yield increases sometimes. These are about as high a yields as we've gotten in our research. 
uh, for most part. We tried ammonium sulfate, as I said. We also tried a chloron or foliar nitrogen application. I believe we used, uh, I think it was four pounds of nitrogen, which is kind of the most that they want to put on uh, with those forms, and we weren't able to move the yields uh, with either one of those. So we, did, we started in 2015, and I won't dwell on these because they're a little complicated, but one of the treatments we put into this trial was a, a plot without crop. So we could see what would happen if you put nitrogen there or didn't. In other words, what the soil supply was going to be. And it's not an accurate measure of soil supply when you go out there occasionally because some, as it rains, it's going to, some will move out of the zone that you're sampling. But um, this was in the top two feet of soil, and this was in, this is the soil only part. I'll show you the plant part here in a minute. But you can see with, with a crop and no nitrogen, here's how much nitrogen we had, that first set of bars. So it never went above what we consider sort of a baseline. In other words, as the soil produced nitrogen, it was just being taken up by the crop. This is with the crop and with nitrogen at planting the second bar. So you can see that, you know, it's a little bit uh, tends to foul. Here's one that seems out of place and I can't really explain it. By R6, these numbers were higher. Uh, but by the end of the season, with or without nitrogen, the soil had about the same amount in. And where we didn't have a crop then is the second set of bars. And that sort of indicates, so here's, if you look at that blue one, you can see it really going up. That's kind of what the soil is, is supplying. There's no crop there to take it up. And what isn't moving out with, with water as it moves through. So it was kind of a first look to say, well, what, you know, how much nitrogen is the crop really getting uh, from the soil? And if you look at, take this one seriously, you know, there's 120 pounds there where there wasn't a crop, and that's what's left at the end of the season. With no crop and putting nitrogen on, you know, it, it raised it um, most of the time, not by the end of the season. So that's... Basically, the difference between those is how much of that applied nitrogen at planting that it still saw later on in the season. This is, a, again, another real busy slide. I put the numbers in here, but this is the total nitrogen we recovered in the plants and in the soils at, plant, at uh, different stages. So we've got R1 through R8. We use no nitrogen, nitrogen at planting, nitrogen at first flower, and nitrogen on four times. So we're trying to see here if you can push nitrogen into the plant by putting fertilizer on. And you might just look at the R6 one here. That's when nitrogen in the plant tends to be at more or less at a maximum. We often find it higher then than we find it at maturity. Um, and I don't know, Sean, if you've seen that or not, but you know these are pretty impressive numbers in terms of an amount and you remember, these yielded about 90 bushel, the checks did. These were 90 bushel yield levels. And at R6, we had 420 pounds of nitrogen in the one that didn't have nitrogen on, and 418 where we had put nitrogen at planting. And where we put nitrogen on it four times, it wasn't increased at all. So we couldn't take nitrogen, pour it on, and strong arm the plant into taking more up. By the same token, putting it on didn't really increase the yields to speak of. And the other alarming thing is that where we put nitrogen on uh, four times, you see we had 200 pounds left in the top two feet at maturity. That's going to head to the tile line. Uh, it doesn't, it's, it's just going to do that. It's mostly nitrate at that point. It's left over. Uh, it's a problem. So Chillicothe or that irrigated location, it's a loam soil, as I said. We were shocked. This is the, you can see it here first, that we had over 20 bushel yield increase uh, by putting nitrogen on at 100 pounds uh, with urea at planting time. These intermediate ones, they're all very uniform and they are higher, a little bit higher, not statistically higher than the check. And then putting it on four times yielded the same, approximately the same as putting it on 
at planting. So it's the planting time application that did the good here. Now, depending on what message I'd like to leave, I just stop and say, we figured out how to make nitrogen and soybeans pay. Uh, the problem is we haven't really figured it out. But this site, you know, we were pretty excited. Incidentally, this ammonium uh, sulfate lowered the yield, but don't, don't get too worked up if you're selling ammonium sulfate. They learned a good lesson that year, and that is not to put it on when the, when the leaves are a little bit wet with dew. Ammonium sulfate is death on leaves if it sticks to them for any time. So don't try that at home. Uh, and it, you know, they could see it right away. I mean, it develops right away. And what are you going to do? They couldn't wash it off. And they had, we had two locations that year where they had that problem. So this was what the crop looked like. It was greener. The report is that it was greener from the very beginning of growth and plants grew larger. This is getting close to maturity, and you can see the green is still there. Incidentally, having plants, soybean plants stay green longer does not automatically mean you've increased their yield. People like to talk about fungicides doing that, and in this case, nitrogen did it. We've seen it go both ways. It can be greener and not yield as well. You know, just extending the filling period. Once you've filled the seeds, that's about all you're going to be able to do. You're not going to be able to make them great big seeds or this sort of thing by extending the filling period. And sometimes it just means they're green longer and you have to wait longer to harvest them. But that's just a, a little object lesson on, you know, this drive to keep soybeans green longer. In our maturity, in our variety trials, maturity, long, longer maturing varieties don't often yield more than short maturing ones for the same reason. It's the number of pods they set back there in, uh, in late July, early, early August that makes the difference in their yield potential, not how long they fill. We don't want them to stop early. I will add that if it really dries up and the leaves fall off early, that's a problem where you end up with small seeds. But it's pretty difficult to make seeds get big and bigger by keeping it green longer. So this is, this is nitrogen in the soil again, and I, the same thing I showed you. You know, these numbers are way down from what I showed you from Urbana the same year. And in those soils, that loam soil, nitrogen is not expected to stick around, and indeed it didn't stick around. We saw the same general pattern where you didn't put nitrogen on and you had a crop. This kind of rebounded a little, but these are all very, very low numbers. 40 pounds in the top two feet is only uh, five parts per million of total nitrogen, nitrate and ammonium, and it very seldom gets less than that, most of the soils. And so that will move on and, and show you the now you remember the yields weren't as high here and these nitrogen contents aren't as high that we found at R6. And putting on nitrogen, you know, this is our best evidence that that nitrogen that the crop was able to have in the plant by the time seed filling was at full, full strength uh, was important to help make yields. These yielded more uh, and they had more nitrogen here at R6 by a substantial amount almost 50% more. I think it's dangerous, though, to say, well, it's because, you, you know, of that nitrogen, it was able to take it up, and that made all the difference. I think it was more the fact that we had larger plants from the beginning, and they just grew faster. So they were bigger plants, and bigger plants will take up more nitrogen. It's a chicken and an egg question a little bit. I understand that. But... Uh, you know, the, the difference that nitrogen made here when you put it on at planting uh, was in the growth rate of the plants. Not so much in, oh, the nitrogen was there then later in the season and it could take it up. You can see our soil levels are lower, but they're, they're higher where we put nitrogen on. Uh, and in this case, you know, these will go, this nitrogen left at the end of the season will go down as well. Uh, where we put extra on in four times, we didn't measure higher amounts of nitrogen at that seed filling stage. 
So I mapped those out like this and showed you that in our Chillicothe location in, under irrigation, we had some response to the amount of nitrogen in the plants at R6. At the Urbana location, we did not. But they were all very high at Urbana. So this is uh, at another site in 2015, and this one was, again, very typical. We had the same problem with ammonium sulfate. We were able to, to get our yields bumped by three or four bushel if you put nitrogen on four times. Just not an economic thing to do, and nothing else made any difference. This one actually seemed to drop it a little, but not compared to the control. So this sort of straight line, no response type thing is what we've really come to expect in these trials. And that's one in South Central Illinois, and here we actually see a, uh, what looks almost like a yield decrease when you put nitrogen on a planting. It certainly did not increase it. At this one, we did see an increase, you know, at this, at putting it on at R3, uh, sort of out of the blue. So we didn't see that at any other location where R3 was the only thing that did anything. And those are yield levels that for that site would be pretty good. And again, a nitrogen response that, that doesn't, doesn't do much for us. This is 2016 at Urbana. We had no effect of nitrogen at all, putting 100 pounds on again. And four times didn't help at all either. These are the plant nitrogen contents in, in the 2016 trial at, at, in our prairie soils there at Urbana. You can see there's large amounts there and the yields were large. So those two things go together, but we weren't able to put nitrogen on and really make those change very much. This is the nitrogen in the plant versus yield graph for there. It's pretty flat. And this is the irrigated Chillicothe site in 2016, and lo and behold, there's a 19 bushel yield increase again, the second year in the same area, different field. And so, you know, we're, the farmer where we did this field, I think is gonna use some urea uh, at planting this year. We're pretty sure, but don't have a lot of proof, I guess, uh, for sure proof, that the soil type makes a difference here, that if nitrogen does interfere with nodulation, these are clearly nodulating. We don't like to count nodules. We just, you know, you can pull out plants and find them. Uh, counting them is, is uh, well, we'll let Sean do that. Uh, but it's, you know, it's remarkable. It, we think that maybe by the time the plants reach V2 or so when nodulation really be, uh, gets a, going and, and takes place, that there isn't enough nitrogen that left in that surface soil to really influence them. But that's just a guess at this point. Urea nitrogen is not supposed to have as much an effect on nodulation and nitrogen fixation as nitrate nitrogen. But how much of this was urea? You know, by the time these reached B2, it's had probably three inches of rain on it. And, uh, and it's been warm and, and quite a bit of conversion to nitrate already. I think the more likely thing is that it's just gone below that zone. Nothing else did much. We got the four times application again, just like we saw in 2015 at this site. Again, it, it had to do with the amount put on at planting and the, none of the others did anything. And uh, you know, the others, you know, they show a higher yield, these intermediate ones, including ammonium sulfate, than the control. Um, and I guess we'll have to agree that that probably happened. Here's that uh, plant soil N content then at uh, stage R6. So these line up with yields. This one's higher. The 4X application is higher compared to its yield. Uh, but it did yield a little bit, you know, yielded the same as, as this one. And that's the correlation there between how much plant nitrogen there was at R6 and yield, and it's not a very good correlation.
So this doesn't, you know, I haven't cleaned up the whole situation a great deal. It's really intriguing <laughs> to get a response of any kind to nitrogen, especially two years at a site. Uh, it's just something that's been very rare in our experience. And I have to admit, sadly, that we, even though, you know, the farmer in that area, and we have, there's not a huge amount of that soil like that. Uh, most of it is irrigated, and in good years, they don't need much irrigation in those soils. Uh, they did have symptoms of SDS in that area pretty badly this last year, and uh, they said that where we had put nitrogen on, they didn't show any symptoms of SDS, sudden death. Um, we're not recommending nitrogen as a control for SDS, but there may be cases when it makes a difference. As a matter of fact, the part I didn't show you before now, they when they put uh, three other rates of nitrogen, well, the zero and the 100 pounds of urea, they put it on a, a, a 50 pound and a 200 pound urea, and look at the response we got to nitrogen rate. So as a matter of fact, putting a, the 100 is what I had showed you, yielded about 71. If you put 200 on, it yielded about 78. So this, this is really sort of puzzling. Uh, and we, they did take NDVI or canopy uh, measurement there, and I put them on the same figure. Uh, and this is the SDS rating. So the SDS rating came down and the canopy rating went up as we put more nitrogen on. And of course, I showed you this canopy rating and the yields look very similar. So this is, you know, adds to the mystery a little bit. Uh, normally, if we see an issue with leaves like that with SDS, you know, there's nothing much you can do about it once you see them. And SDS is a, a disease that moves around, comes and goes. Uh, they're going to sell a lot of Elevo in that area this, this year. <laughs> because they had the disease last year and they may see none of that disease this year. But uh, that's just what's worked out on this. So I, I don't know if we've done more than added to the mystery by that, by doing that. Well, I had to show you that we did get 100 bushel one time following 12 years of continuous corn, 15 inch rows, and we threw everything we could think of on there, seaweed, extract, chicken litter, gypsum. We weren't able to move the yields very much by doing that, when we added nitrogen to those other things, we didn't add any yields. And so we, this one is one that I'm still thinking about a little bit, uh, where we added nitrogen, where we had fungicide and insecticide put on two times, we did get an increase in yield there. Uh, where we didn't, we got a smaller increase where we didn't use uh, uh, where we didn't use fungicide and insecticide, we got no increase from nitrogen. So there's probably several things that work here. One is that if you can, if nitrogen and interaction with fungicides, for example, keeps it green longer, you know, we might be able to get more yield sometimes if that happens before its normal maturity date. But I, we're just speculating on things like that. And... Uh, it remains the fact that when we go out with nitrogen to put it on soybeans, our expectation today should be that it's probably not going to increase yields. And our even greater expectation should be that it will not pay for itself. A lot of people, you know, the fly guys are, are let loose in Illinois and they like to fly on urea. Uh, the last I heard, which was in 20. It was in 2015 when we had a lot of wet weather in June. I think they raised their rates a little, but they were charging a hundred a dollar per pound of nitrogen. So a hundred pounds of urea was running about forty five dollars an acre. To put on. So you need four bushel if you're going to fly it on, and most people are flying it on. They're not driving through their rows. Uh, by the time. They want to put it on a, even 30 inch rows that have too much canopy to drive through them without doing a lot of damage and they want to get it on quick. 
I just showed you, this is some data from an irrigation study that one of my students ran in over three years. We did non-irrigated without nitrogen, non-irrigated with nitrogen, irrigated with no nitrogen, and irrigated with nitrogen. And over the three years, we barely moved the yields by doing either one. I don't know what, you know, I'm still puzzled by our lack of irrigation uh, response uh, in terms of yield, but certainly putting on more water doesn't make these things more responsive to inputs like nitrogen. And having said that, I'll show you a second series of these studies we did, and we got a little more response then that came out of these two years where we, to irrigation, but within irrigation, you know, adding nitrogen really didn't do anything. So all the response we got in this study was to irrigation, and it was still only about seven or eight bushels at, at pretty good yield levels. One was 2012, our very dry year. It was an outstanding year if you had irrigation that year. Sunshine will do that for you. And so I went back and mapped, like I showed you before, with irrigated and non-irrigated, you know, looking at, at the yield level and the yield response to see if, you know, do high yields, if you can goose them up with irrigation, do they respond more to nitrogen and we're just not really seeing. The non-irrigated ones have a nice relationship with uh, yield level, you know, uh, nitrogen response is higher with uh, higher yield levels over the six years uh, with the irrigated ones, not so much. So, Finishing up then, do we need nitrogen? Should we use nitrogen on soybeans? I already told you, we typically see in most years and most soils little or no response to nit of soybeans to in-season fertilizer nitrogen. Over the years, I'd say, yeah, that 10% of those times, it probably still holds pretty well. It might be a little higher because we've had those two responses at one site. But understand at that site where we've seen that, it's planting time nitrogen that's making the difference. Nobody really has talked about planting time nitrogen, at least not very many people have. And that's because we've always been told that that's not a good idea to put nitrogen on a planting for soybeans. In soils where early growth will respond, and that's not very many of our soils, and I think in Ohio I'd say the same thing, then we might see a yield boost because it gets the plants off to a faster start. We don't see that with starter fertilizer. We generally don't see a starter fertilizer response on corn. I guess it would be intriguing to see if there might be one in soybeans in some soils. If you have a lighter soil with lower organic matter, maybe it's something you want to try. But don't don't say I'm recommending it, but you know, I think we're in a stage with nitrogen on soybeans where it doesn't cost us very much to try a few things to see what we get. Do I think in 10 years or five years, everybody's going to be using nitrogen on soybeans? Absolutely not. You know, the environmental cost has to be taken into this. The economics is the first cut, and the economics is not favorable based on the average of everything we've seen. There is no hint that higher yielding soybeans might respond more to nitrogen. I will say that lower yielding soybeans tend not to respond. In other words, under 50 bushel, they have other problems and nitrogen's not going to fix. Uh, but, but within a range of 60 to 90 bushel, uh, we wouldn't find a good correlation at all between yield level and response to nitrogen. Planting time N has increased, as I told you, in the irrigated loam soil two years running. As a general practice, N fertilizer on soybean is unlikely to pay for itself, and some of it will end up in the tile lines, not might. It's also possible, and this is a warning I put out last summer, we had warm temperatures like you did. Our soybeans were this tall, you know, in the last week of July and still growing. And I put that out, I said, Please don't put nitrogen on these and encourage them to grow more. I'm sure that we've had some people hurt their yields, you know, trying to win. We have a yield contest sort of thing now in Illinois, and uh, the guys that are have declared been declared the winners at 100 bushel 
plus the last three years, I think most of them are using nitrogen. No idea if it does any good, but just using it because it sounds like you've done something different. Um, and I think that we can hurt our yields sometimes by that. You know, we showed this last year that the taller the soybean, in our variety trials, the taller the soybean plants were, the less they yielded. And the more they, the taller they were, the more they lodged. We had a serious amount of lodging last year in soybeans because of the growing conditions early in the season. And I'd be almost willing to guarantee that putting more nitrogen on them made that worse. We had a, fortunately, we had a period of a little bit dry weather there in late, late July, early August that slowed their growth a little bit, probably helped our yields to some extent. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. And I'm not trying to do this just to say, well, you know, I set out to show that nitrogen wouldn't work, uh, but, you know, I, I'm not discouraged about it at this point. I just think in our better soils where you're getting good soybean yields, and, and as I remind people, I've never seen really nitrogen deficient soybeans, uh, at least not very often. So they're getting supplied with that nutrient and they're pretty much doing it on their own. And I think we ought to, ought to be happy for that. One thing I threw in as an oddity here at the end, I was looking at our data. We have a study that's been running for about 35 years now over in Western Illinois where we have corn after corn and corn after soybeans with nitrogen rates. So in the corn soybean one, every year we have a, nitro, a soybean study a plot as a intervening one. And we decided about 20 some years ago, they started taking yields on the soybeans. And when I sort of took this over, I, I kind of wondered why they were doing that. And I just, I went and looked at the soybean data just out of curiosity one day. And lo and behold, I saw a response to the nitrogen rate that had been put on the previous corn crop. And it looks like that. And that's over 28 years average. And I, I point this out as a curiosity because, you know, everybody's using nitrogen rates somewhere in here, so it doesn't have much bearing. But from a standpoint of what's left in that soil, is that leftover nitrogen? Is it positive? What's with this decrease from here to here? You know, what changed? So I'm going to show you a little spaghetti ball here, but this is the average of a, of a period, about a 10-year period, eight, nine-year period, where there was a pretty much a nitrogen response every year. Just to give you an idea of the flavor of this thing, there's some really strange things in here. Here's one that you know, yielded 55 where the rate the previous year on corn had been zero, and where, where the rate in corn had been 240, it yielded 73, 18 bushel more. Here's one side here, you, one year here, you can see it started at 70, dipped down to the low 60s, and then by the time we got to high end rates, it was back up to 70. Most of them had that shape I just showed you. They go down from the zero to 60 pounds, and then they go up like that. So that's what most of them show. And you might think, well, what, what's the point of this? I think it's just interesting to figure out, try to figure out if, there, if that little bit of residual nitrogen left in the soil, or lack of it, which is really what we're seeing, is, is having an effect. You know, we would normally say, well, the more devoid the soil is, the more nitrogen the crop will fix. And I guess this reopens that question I mentioned earlier. Does it mean that the soil supply sometimes is important for yield? It's so odd, some of these things are so odd that I don't know if we can conclude very much, but it's just an observation. This is the average of those years, this yellow line here. And you can see it's pretty modest and also I suspect that what we're seeing from this dip from zero to 60, when we put 60 pounds on corn, basically that crop generally takes up net more nitrogen from the soil than when you put zero. In other words, it grows enough better that it takes up at 60 that you put on plus some compared to the zero, which has a lot more.
And we, uh, we discontinued a study this last year that had been 10 years continuous corn. And uh, we had, uh, I've talked to you about it before, residue removal with and without tillage, and then we put on nitrogen rates. And we did that in the same plots for 10 years. This is at one of our sites, and they had hail, and we didn't see any response to nitrogen. And we saw no response to the previous uh, residue removal. So having more residue left there over the years, and that would be a lot of tons of residue left where it was all present versus all removed, we didn't see any difference at all on these. We still did the tillage variable, so this was tilled and no-tilled in 2016. This was our other site, and I was, you know, after seeing a response to nitrogen that previous one, I thought, well, over the years, you know, you're going to build up a bunch of nitrogen in this high rate, and we didn't see anything response to the, uh, the corn crop, or the soybean crop, or previous use of nitrogen on corn. We did see there a little bit of a dip where all the residue was present, and we did, uh, we did tillage, we actually saw a dip. So I won't even try to figure that one out. 